2019, an explosive time for cinema. Back-to-back -back blockbusters ranging from big-name superhero movies, family-friendly flicks, and jaw-dropping thrillers. Now, if you enjoy your cinema experience in America, you probably frequent either Cinemark Theatres, Regal Theatres, or AMC, with AMC Theatres being the largest movie theater chain in America with approximately 1,004 different locations across the country. But let's put ourselves in the shoes of AMC. Now, it's no surprise that the movie industry is very tough to compete in, let alone be profitable. I am never going to financially recover from this. As a movie theater company, you have to deal with rising threats to your profit margin due to illegal piracy and having to pay half the revenue you generate to studios that supply you the movies to play in your theaters. Factor in competition with the likes of Netflix, Disney Plus, and HBO Max, all while having to survive a global pandemic that forces you to shut down your doors. It's no surprise that movie theaters haven't been doing too hot. Still have an EPS loss, and is that a sort of highlight, despite the fact that you have been outpacing some of your rivals, that your broader industry is under serious threat, that you're having record ticket sales, you're doing better than some of your rivals, but you're still reporting an EPS loss and your stock price is still falling quite sharply. And to make things even worse, Apex Predators, aka Green Hedge Funds, see the opportunity to short your movie theater company into the ground and it's no surprise that on January 5th, 2021, AMC stock would trade at an all-time 52-week low of $1.91. Uh, if you go back to last March, when we had to shut all of our theaters globally and our revenues fell literally to zero overnight, um, uh, we found ourselves in a position where to survive this pandemic, we would need to raise capital. However, fast forward today, and AMC is currently trading at $10.66 at the time of this recording, and even hit an all-time high of $20.36 on January 27, 2021. So today, we're gonna take a look at ticker symbol AMC and see why AMC movie theaters is so freaking bullish right now. Going to the movies is an American tradition that dates all the way back to the 1910s. From the silent era to Hollywood's golden age, and now the dawn of modern film and blockbusters, movie consumption has truly stood the test of time. However, the hot debate today for investors is how people will continue to watch said movies, and this debate has slowly turned into a war of retail investors and whales versus hedge funds, with AMC being the battleground per se. Now, the interesting story of all this lies in how AMC got to this point. You just don't magically go to $1.91 a share to $20 a share without a major catalyst. And honestly, it's the bears who sparked this war. Bears and shorts started driving down the price of AMC because they genuinely believed that cinema is dead thanks to the rise of streaming services, and that the pandemic was the final blow to an industry that was already on life support. Bears argue that why go to the movies and spend $20 per ticket per movie when you could spend $20 a movie on streaming services? Bears also reinforce their argument by saying cinema just can't compete because the same movies that used to air exclusively in theaters will now be on the said streaming services. We see this with Marvel taking its new approach with their Black Widow movie by showing it in theaters and Disney Plus on the same day, which has never happened before. Normally, movies are released in theaters exclusively for a month or two before being released on DVD and streaming services. Bears also say, why spend $100 for a family of four to go to the movie theaters when the same family could spend $30 on Disney Plus and make snacks at home to watch the same exact movie? These arguments don't even include the fact that movie theater attendance has been in a decline since 2012. Domestic yearly box office numbers have been fairly stagnant since 2016, and AMC as a company isn't really profitable. AMC averaged a $103 million annual net loss from 2016 through 2019. The company reported a $149 million net loss in 2019. And while what happened in 2020 is not the fault of the company, bears have had a hard time looking past AMC's reported net loss of $4.6 billion in 2020 alone. And it's for those reasons we've seen bearish traders and hedge funds going short on this stock. Major players like Citadel and Melvin Capital have been confirmed to have short positions in AMC, but these short positions were the start of a domino effect that leads to where we are today. It's important to know the reason why someone would short this stock because these shorts play a very key role in what made this stock become so bullish in the eyes of friendly whales and retail investors. 
And this is where our story starts. The pandemic of 2020 was honestly what set the bears and short sellers in motion. In times of crisis, it's usually the wealthy who comes out on top. While the average American was scrambling to buy toilet paper and have food for their families, hedge funds saw the stock market crash as a golden once in a life opportunity to invest in companies they believe in at a major discount, but also crush the ones they didn't while they were down on one knee. A company that sadly got the full brunt of this was AMC. Now AMC has been no stranger to being shorted, and the company knew of this. In 2019, Adam Aaron went on a CNBC interview to explain how the company had been a victim of some nasty short selling. Been the victim of some short selling during the year. There might have been some game playing with our stock today. But as I said, most people who follow the company closely thought this was a very strong record setting quarter for AMC. If you aren't familiar with the practice of short selling, it's essentially when an investor borrows a stock, sells the stock, and then binds the stock back to return it to the lender. In a really, really simplified way of looking at it, this is like placing a stack of bricks on a stock chart so it just can't keep going up. This practice, if done on a big enough scale, can really tank the stock price. And hedge funds have the capital to do this on a really big scale. And so they did. Over the course of 2020, these hedge funds like Citadel and Madeline Capital targeted stocks like GameStop, Cost, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, and many more. And for almost the entirety of 2020, these hedge funds made billions of dollars while slowly driving these companies towards the brink of bankruptcy. And it wasn't until late 2020 that Reddit started to realize what big money was doing and set the war in motion. And so it begun. Reddit users on the popular subreddit r slash Wall Street Bets noticed in January of 2021 that hedge funds were so greedy that they shorted approximately 140% of GameStop's public float. This is very crucial to what has been happening in the market because GameStop was the true catalyst for stocks like AMC. This was a bombshell realization to retail investors. It's one thing to be over leveraged, but to be 140% over leveraged is insanity. And with the power of the internet, information of this spread like wildfire. And because these people genuinely like GameStop stock, they went to buy the stock in droves. From January 12th to January 13th, GameStop stock shot up $10 in one day. As more people bought in, volume started picking up. Hedge fund analysts saw the news, volume, and price action, and thus, big money slowly decided to step in on the buy side. All this money pouring in causes shorts to piss themselves, causing some to cover, thus driving up the price even more, resulting in what is, eventually, a short squeeze. Now, while all this is building up and happening, people are quite amazed, and they start looking at what other stocks were heavily shorted. Now, fortunately, AMC ended up being the second most shorted stock alongside GameStop, and thus, a separate community of people started buying into AMC, causing the price to spike. Just like GameStop, as the price rises, big money starts to take notice and steps in, causing shorts to cover, and this vicious cycle continues all the way up till January 27, 2021. This was the peak of AMC squeeze, where the price hit about from $5 to $20.36 in a span of one day. This price very well could have gone past $20 and beyond. However, on the next day, January 28, 2021, Robinhood brokerage prevented the buying of assets like AMC and GME. Due to them doing this, other brokerages followed in suit. Now, the reason is because of a rule called T plus 2. This is a very complicated rule that applies to brokerages, but simply put, Robinhood did not have the liquidity to finalize these trades and report the upfront capital to their clearinghouses. It was a financial nightmare to say the least. Now, there are theories that Robinhood did this to help prevent their business partner Citadel, which if you don't remember, these were the guys who went short on stocks like AMC and GME before they went parabolic. But I don't want to present this as a fact until more information is revealed. But as a result of this halting, prices for these heavily shorted stocks fell sharply. Just as fast as the prices shot up, they bled down just as fast. But AMC has been a fighter through all of this. The halting only made retail investors even more angry and even more convicted in the stock. 
Now, retail investors started buying a lot of AMC even before it was crashing, and these people have been doing this for the past two months since this whole situation first blew up. Multiple communities have formed on Reddit, Discord, and YouTube, all creating a unified bullish sentiment for the stock. And this, this right here is the biggest reason why AMC is so bullish. There's a lot of buying power entering the stock, despite many, many articles detailing how AMC is a dead cat, worth only one penny, and many other hit pieces on the company. But the numbers say differently. Of the first AMC squeeze in January, the CEO Adam Aaron was able to raise close to a billion dollars in funding and was able to stave off going bankrupt for the remainder of 2021. This doesn't even include the fact that a lot of big movies were delayed due to COVID. So a lot of big Marvel movies, blockbusters, and movies of that nature are set to come out in 2021. And although we did talk about how movies will be releasing on Disney Plus and movie theaters at the same day, this is a big reason for why bulls are bullish. They see this as a COVID recovery play or a potential Amazon or other company acquisition. Because although this is not confirmed, there have been rumors and talks that either Netflix or Amazon could acquire AMC, but this is not confirmed. Like I said, all speculation. But multiple hedge funds and institutions have also been going long on AMC and adding more every other week. Big names like Vanguard, BlackRock, and Schwab have some major stakes in this AMC battle. Now, it's impossible to say how all this will end, but as it stands today, AMC is very bullish and will remain so as long as people stay convicted and buying the stock. AMC is still a very heavily shorted stock to this day, and it has a lot of volatility to it. And some of it, a lot of people believe, is not even entirely legal. But ultimately, I do believe this could squeeze again. Everything is lined up in place for this to happen. And as I've been researching and keeping up with the stock, it has been very, very interesting. And I'm sure I'll be making a part to this video when this whole AMC situation is all said and done. But as for now, this is the reason and story behind why AMC is so freaking bullish right now. If you love the video and you want to see more videos on stocks, business, and entrepreneurship, consider subscribing as we upload video essays every single week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.